WCNC Charlotte. This is Flashpoint. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Charlotte's new city council is now set. Tuesday's election didn't come away with any real surprises or big upsets. Mayor Vi Lyles easily winning her race wasn't even close there. Democrats won all the city's councils uh, at large seats as they have for years now. Double edged mayor Braxton Winston will hold on to their seats with two familiar but new faces. James Smudgy Mitchell as well as Lawana Mayfield back on city council after a break. The closest race of the night, though, District 6. Take a look at this one. Republican incumbent Tark Bakari edging out Democrat Stephanie Hand by just a few votes was a close one. We'll talk to him coming up in just a few minutes, but first. Joining us now, the night's top vote getter, Charlotte City Councilwoman Dimple Ajmira. Dimple, thanks for coming on, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Ben. Uh, so because of the calendar, you, you all have a one year term, basically one year and I think a couple of months. Um, realistically, what can get done in that time? What do you think should be council's priority? Certainly constituent services is our number one priority and just being available, being accountable. We have a lot going on. As you know, we got the UDO, which will be uh, obviously currently scheduled for this council. However, it's a living and breathing document that's going to be a blueprint for how Charlotte grows for decades to come. And there will be some changes uh, that might come after it's adopted. So certainly there is a lot that we have to continue to keep an eye on and monitor the progress on unified development ordinance. We got to fix our transportation issues, especially reliability issues and efficiency issues with cats. And then we got, um, we got to continue to deliver on affordable housing, address crime in our city and infrastructure projects. Um, you, you mentioned the, the UDO. Um, I know you all are supposed to uh, vote on that coming up uh, in, in just a, a few weeks. Um, but I, 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 help us understand, because I know you guys are supposed to vote. I know it was, it's was it been a very narrow vote um, the last time th this issue has come up. So um, can you say, will it pass coming up in a few weeks? I know that staff is continuing to work through changes that's been requested by the community, council members, and uh, business community. So at this point, it's all about staff uh, delivering on the promise. Obviously, we are not going to make everyone happy, and that's not the goal here, but it's to make sure that majority of the council agrees. And I think that's what staff is currently doing. They're working through some of the changes to ensure that majority of the council is on board. Are you a yes? Are you a yes? Well, as of right now, I have some changes that I'm working through with our uh, staff, uh, but certainly I am supportive of the UDO document. I was one of the supporters for the 2040 plan, but there are several changes that need to be made. So staff is working through those changes. What, what are the changes you're wanting? Obviously, we have some changes uh, that we are working through in terms of green space, open space, addressing displacement, so there are several changes uh, that are needed to be made before the council, uh, well, at least before um, uh, to address majority of the council's concerns. Do you think it could pass, but pass with caveats that, that, that you all are hoping to go back and either change something or do more in the new council? I mean, that's a possibility because as I said, Ben, this is a living and breathing document. This is not, just one time process. We are gonna to have to continue to update the UDO. There might be unintended consequences, which we might find out later. So we should be open-minded about making some of those changes later on after that's adopted. I wanna talk about you and your, and your ambitions um, as the top vote getter. <laughs> Oftentimes that person is mayor, mayor pro tem. I don't think there's anything in the rules that say that's what happens. Um, I know in the past, there's been a few dust ups about whether or not that that person really should be mayor pro tem or not. Um, do, do you, for one, want to be mayor pro tem? And for two, do you think you should be mayor pro tem? Yes, I am interested in being a mayor pro tem, traditionally top vote getter, a, 
uh, is Mayor Pro Tem, like you said, and that's just been a tradition, but that's also uh, what Charlottians decided, right? There is a reason uh, Charlottians uh, said, you know, we want this person to be the top vote getter and um, who will who will serve as our mayor pro tem. Uh, you came in with a, a class of uh, city council members a few years ago, um, the sort of the, the new millennial council, um, <laughs> and came in with a lot of fanfare, a lot of photo shoots, uh, a, a lot of coverage in, in uh, shows like this and in the newspaper and things like that. Um, but it seems like th there's been more gridlock in recent years. Do you think that's the product of good, robust conversation and debates, or, or do you think that that is uh, a problem and a problem that needs to be fixed? Ben, I don't think there is a gridlock, to be honest. I mean, look at what council has successfully delivered. We delivered on $50 million affordable housing bond referendum. We delivered multi-million dollars in relief program to keep people in their homes, especially during pandemic. We delivered millions of dollars in business risk relief to ensure that our businesses not just thrive, but survive through difficult times. And we delivered on increased investments in our infrastructure, especially bike lanes, sidewalks. We went from 15 to $50 million in biking infrastructure, sidewalks, I mean, sidewalks infrastructure. All of that was accomplished without any property tax increase. I think that's all something we should all be proud of. But as an organization, obviously we are going to have different personalities. So it's time to set aside our differences and personality uh, differences and just work towards one goal. And that is to deliver on the promises that we had all made to Charlotteans. The other big thing you guys are gonna be talking about in the next council is you know, expanding the, the current transit system and uh, mobility issues. Um, but they see the current issues with cats and they say, wait a second, Cats isn't handling what it has right now. How are we possibly going to add a, a silver line or a red line or or must more bus routes when we can't handle the current bus routes? Well, Ben, I share those concerns. I share concerns around reliability and effectiveness of our cats. And uh, currently there is a comprehensive review of the department that is underway, as you probably know. We have hired a third party consulting firm to do a comprehensive review and to, to actually give us uh, recommendations on what can be done. And that includes our leadership. And city manager, city attorney, and city clerk reports to the city council. A cat's it's a direct report of city manager. They don't report to the city council. So we have to work through this council manager form of government, we have to work through our city manager to hold our cat's leadership accountable. All right, Dimple Jamera, the, the top vote getter uh, sitting, sit in the city council races this, this past week. Dimple, thank you as always, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ben, for having me. I really appreciate it. And Spencer, great seeing you virtually. <laughs> That's right, uh, Spencer, our producer. Uh, Dimple, thanks, we appreciate it. More Flashpoint after this.